waxing poetic. Yeah. What the next step is. Yeah. And John, have you thought this through? Yeah. What's going to happen? Yeah. Everything with the marquee. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, to a special episode of the Popcorn Watchlist podcast, where we discuss and celebrate our favorites in TV and film. I am your host, Xavier, who does not botch his intros. That's on record. And uh, with me in the studio are the guys. Uh, Say hello, Anthony. Hello, Anthony. Got Danny, our info guy on the other end of the couch. And in his uh, same funky little chair is uh, Zach. Say hello. This is a gray funky little chair. It is actually a great funky little Hello. chair. You're right. Funky Buddha chair? Funky Buddha chair? No, we're, we're not the beer podcast. But, uh, yeah. We can be. That, that's our sister uh, group. Mm. Big shout out to uh, <laughs> Outdoors Barbecues and Brews. Uh, they got some great content going on. But today, you guys are all here watching and listening to discuss our... I, I can't even speak. This movie was insane. <laughs> uh, we're here about our special John Wick 4 John Wick Chapter 4 episode, and I can speak for everybody that this movie was incredible. All right, that's it. End of episode. No, no <laughs> but uh, that's it. We're done. No. Uh, so, yeah, stick around. We're going to talk about our favorite things that we noticed, little details that we found out after the fact, and overall amazing impressions about John Wick Chapter 4. There will be some minor spoilers, so if you have not seen this yet, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Go all, and watch the movie. All the spoilers. Watch it now. You have been warned. Yeah, this is a spoiler podcast. As the Harbinger, played by uh, Clancy Brown, is going to show up. It's like you have one hour. And that's it. See, even that's a spoiler. But uh, let's get right to it, guys. Uh, Danny, uh, let's uh, let's go right into the action, just like how the movie goes right into the action. Uh, some pretty amazing stuff, right? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it starts off just, uh, it was in the desert, no? Yes. Like, starts off going through horses and yeah, just killing people. John is on horseback. You know, it's great because it shows a little realism in the sense that it is hard to aim on a horse. Yeah, like, he didn't kill them in, like, two seconds. Like, yeah. it actually took a little bit. He did have to run them down a little bit. But uh, he's going after the, the elder, which is really cool because there's, like, a replacement elder. So then I kind of thought, hey, maybe John should just be the elder. Then he could be like the unkillable elder. But, you know, with I, rules being rules. I don't think he wants to live in a desert. I think he just wants to have vengeance. Retribution more than anything else. Uh, that whole scene was cool. It was shot really well. I, I, I couldn't tell if it was like some volume slash like digital volume or green screen. But uh, I'm going to assume it was real because they went to a lot of locations in this movie. I know a, there were some green screens, but it went back. I to wouldn't Morocco. be surprised if they went to some form of tattooing location. Yeah. Just I, do I, the Mandalorian and go back to tattooing. <laughs> I would. I would also agree with that because I nothing in that sequence seemed out of place like it was fake or, or obvious that it was a green screen or some kind of like set. But I. I, I was looking for shot. lighting and it looked like at least like there was a backdrop where you had John and then the, 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 the kind of like Canyon stuff in the background and the light like you could see shadows on him. But I thought maybe that was just like key lighting or something, some type of other base lighting on set that they put on him and just had this digital background. I don't know for sure, but it looked great. And the whole sequence was cool, too, because, you know, we got some more characterization with John back at it after the little tumble he experienced in chapter three and uh little little yeah thanks winston so in chapter three he had to like come close to death for him to find the elder so how did he how did he find him this time maybe he had somebody else get close to death i wouldn't put it past i wonder how many clips he used to to shoot those three guys on horseback because 
they were probably riding for a while. It seemed like there was n- there wasn't anything around them. Um, uh, good question. I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter. It <laughs> <laughs> right, doesn't matter. I'm, I'll go on record saying, dude was very, you know, I get well in later in the parts of the movie, he's not conservative with his ammo at all. But no, no, by no means. But do you um, need to be though? No, not no. when you keep taking everybody else's. Yeah, it's <laughs> just bullet scrounging. Wish I could do that. That old Call of Duty scavenger perk. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. And then from there, we get this whole idea of the Bill Skarsgård's character, uh, and he kills the elder. By the way, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Again, I was trying to. Anthony will be this the one. This is a spoiler drop. podcast. Yeah. Don't listen to this if you haven't seen the movie. Like I warned you yeah, five exactly, minutes ago. I mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's he just straight up kills the man. He's just like, I don't care. And then we get to some cool stuff in New York, and uh, you know, like I think the movie sets up what's going to go down really well, just like, as concisely as it is for a movie that's two hours and forty nine minutes. Like to me, it doesn't didn't feel like there was any bloat or anything like that. There were always. Steps, very, li- very little steps on the journey uh maybe a couple conversations here like later on there's a conversation between winston and the marquee that's in the museum or i don't know if his apartment or something he just has every famous painting known to man but that's a really cool kind of it was the louvre. sophistication apparently it was filmed in the louvre so he o- so yeah, the marquee so it, owns the louvre but, well he i um, guess he just rented out that section and put a a couch in there i don't know <laughs> I, yeah, because I guess he did what Santino did, like with that museum in New York. Probably. Yeah, why not? These people guess. are very rich. Just, uh, I mean, yeah, they're all rich in gold coins. Because it's the commerce of relationships. I have to keep quoting part. Yeah, of it's, it's cool that uh, to see him doing something else after Pennywise. Yeah, man. Uh, he was also like a very little bit in Barbarian, but this one was. Uh, it's cool to see him ham it up like hardcore in this movie with like a the the most outrageous french accent he did have some cool um like scenes like you could tell he was like unhinged oh yeah everything with the with the trapper yeah yeah yeah. that part was nuts at the in the the delivery stable where he's just Mm -hmm. like i need you to prove who whose side you're on and it's just like damn that was nuts he stabs this man in the hand and tells him you either if you know lesser man will if you pull it out i'll shoot you dead but you have to slide it out ah oh, that was <laughs> and you could tell the whole theater was like damn this dude's messed up that was that was awesome um but you know uh it was cool like anthony said they went to a lot of on-site locations um i know like, after everything going on with the establishment of this guy the marquee is like sort of like been hired by the table or assigned by the table to high table to take out john wick uh he first has to clean house with winston and makes an example by you know um bidding farewell to lance reddick's character sharon uh rest in peace lance reddick and uh it was a really in- very powerful statement because that's like a beloved character and this guy is gonna just cold blood kill this man it's it's that sense you know a statement like you can tell a lot of the a lot of the theater obviously because the passing of lance reddick but the the way the character goes out it's is powerful i mean that and like you know the movie starts off with uh like in memory of yep. uh, lance and i think since he dies so early in the movie i think it hits you more like oh man yeah like man like that yep i know yeah that, that was a a narrative choice that i know he was supportive of and you know there's there's stories of keanu reeves even on his birth on keanu's birthday he wanted to go on set to say hi to lance so that was really cool it's a stand-up guy for sure uh, then we get to osaka one of the best locations visually in this movie absolutely sure. all the neon lights like osaka's known for being like the a kind of like a, a more lively town than kyoto for example so like i'm glad they used osaka as like a a lively uh it's more of a not like tokyo hustle and bustle but it's more just like osaka's got character osaka's got um you know got more personality if that makes any sense and immediately from the establishing shots with the river i forgot the name of the river but i knew it, it was like oh this is osaka easy and uh we find out that yeah um hiroyuki sonata's character is the uh concierge of that continental 
And the Continental in Osaka is freaking cool. <laughs> like, 100%. So cool. Well, he's the manager. He's right? the manager. Yeah. Sorry, not concierge. The manager. Yeah. The yeah. concierge is, is uh, his daughter. Is his daughter. daughter. Akira, yeah. Which I found out she's a, um, a, a famous, like, Japanese pop singer. Yeah, but, I think this is her first role, which is, like, nice. Dude. <laughs> she did a great job. She she did great for a lot of, like, the, the, the hardcore action stuff. She was all up in there. Uh, they're, Like, I, I'll, I just, I don't, I think once, like, the plot develops and then you see that there are converging characters coming into play. Like, even before we get to Osaka, we meet Donnie Yen's character. Uh, I, I thought it was funny that his name was Kane. And he walked around with a, a walking stick because he's blind. And dude, what a what an awesome character for Donnie Yen. Like it's you know, like I don't want him to be typecast as all these blind people. Like his true <laughs> Imwe in Rogue One. Two for two. Who had who had awesome personality. Uh Kane now is somebody who has so uh, just mo- very different and unique layers to the character. Like he's not just like, okay, I'm blind assassin, give me whatever. Like you can tell he's reluctant. There's a lot of things going on in his he's life. He's definitely mastered that type of role. Mm-hmm. You didn't. You didn't say his name right. Kane. No, you gotta say it like John Wick. Kane. <laughs> Every time it was like Kane? John. Kane. It's like a question. <laughs> yeah, John. Like that. And like, and it's cool seeing that all these like top tier badasses are always like intertwined or unique. Uh, have a unique relationship, and it's I love just the implication of the of their past and the things that they've done beforehand and like and it converging onto this because of you know it's all based off of people's decisions and you know decisions and actions and consequences that's a a big uh a big theme in this movie or in the whole series anyway it's just actions and consequences um but you have shimazu who's played by hiroyuki sonata pain and he's always good dude but i like i knew he was gonna be good but i didn't think he was gonna be this good he's always good i don't know why i doubted I don't, like i never doubt but like i was like oh he's gonna be there maybe just like a stature figure you know he, he does some of his action sequences especially like when he did scorpion in mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. but this dude like had everything like he was he went everything from guns to swords to other weapons um and like you have these the the Marquis forces just kind of show up because John Wick's there at this Continental and a smorgasbord of just there's so much that goes on anything from the hotel staff fighting the goons to uh, Shimazu fighting Akira fighting John fighting on the rooftop and then just like everything goes nuts I feel like I I have to gather my thoughts because it's just there's so much going on there. <laughs> I saw the movie twice, uh, and I think the movie takes about ten, maybe fifteen minutes to do its like start up and introductions, and then once the crap hits the fan, then it's like almost almost like a thirty minute action sequence. It's it's pretty nuts. Yeah, all that all that in Japan is about thirty thirty to I don't know like it's like it's like five minutes. Once it's it ends, it's like the first forty forty five minutes of the movie. Yeah, that's it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. And it does an amazing. It doesn't job. feel like it. It doesn't. It doesn't no. no, like because and there's every all these different characters have their moments to shine, at like everything from from John's, uh, uh, like like the shootout. It's like a shootout, but that's on the rooftop. But then the staff is using bows and like taking out these guys that like and they're shooting them in the neck, like so they know that oh we know their weaknesses, and like there there's one guy like the one guy who was. I forgot. I think he was fighting John or something. Took an arrow to the knee. He took an arrow to the knee, (laughs) straight up arrow to the knee, and then like he gets punched or something, and so he's hanging by the knee, and then like I guess his throat gets slit, and he just is hanging by the knee. That's it. Like his lifeless body. Oh yeah, he got shot. I think he like once the the arrow hit his knee, then he got shot in the face, and so his body just dangled while his his knee. Yeah, that was that's incredible (laughs) stunt work. Like you have to be flexible. That stunt team mastered the flexibility of like dude shout out to the stunt team in general like and also shout out to the the fact that the high table forces in japan have the oni masks on i don't know why that that little detail is like okay this is cool like they're they're regionally sourced let's just say that and uh dude every and then also like it's a great way to establish that kane is not just some random guy that's like oh whatever like blind assassin whatever like he he uses tricks and tools to his advantage like the 
<laughs> the doorbell <laughs> the doorbell alarms on all the goons that was that was actually pretty clever because uh when we were in the theater x and i were like, we're like oh we're like <laughs> what, what, what I is thought he it was putting charges <laughs> or I thought something? it was like remote explosives like yeah. golden eye or something yeah and we're, we're like both kind of looking and wondering with this like oh i wonder what he's doing it looks like uh like, like charges and then and then we we see it a few seconds later the guy walks by and it's a sensor and it doorbell brings it yeah it's a doorbell <laughs> bing, essentially. Bing. and the, so that way Kane can uh, know where, where these people are and he can um, shoot them or... or yeah, he's not shooting blind. Like, he can actually shoot in this area. Or what's really cool... He, he was is, shooting blind. Shut up. He's, <laughs> what I mean. he's not shooting at nothing. And what's cool, too, is he will shoot at people just to get them moving so right. that he uses other senses to know where they are and then um, goes nuts. Because he followed, like, that path, literally. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah like the guys follow each and every path. like after the first ring he was waiting for the second ring mm -hmm. he's like once that guy yeah. passes i'm gonna shoot him here in the leg or something like that uh, it was really cool okay so they also introduced uh once again the badass head of security for this movie <laughs> uh the the, the spanish guy yeah the latino guy well i don't know where he's from. was he from spain no probably marco zoror actually no he's from chile oh cool. he's from chile sorry so but the Latino guy he's the Latino. in the movie, <laughs> but that dude, dude, he was he was awesome. Yeah, every movie they have to have the like the big the henchman that that like There's gives the John mini, a problem. He's always the mini boss. They that always gives give John, John a problem. problem. And yeah, yeah, this guy was good. That guy was even good in fighting the other goons. Is great. Um, damn, can we talk about the? Um, okay, how how thankful are you to that you finally got to watch It Man before watching this movie? Well, I don't think he saw it. Oh, he didn't see that with us. We, it. I saw it with you guys. Yeah, you gotta watch how, it. How good was it, Danny? That you watched it, man, and then you went to that sequence. I had more appreciation for Donnie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Zach, the, the flurry punches, he, the flurry punches. That guy just—he did that one time, and the guy sitting next to me was like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> those are real like yeah. there's some people that may think like oh they were maybe speeding up his no his punch is like no he he punches that fast yeah like, everything donnie yen does is legit do not do not question donnie yen at all and a great great showcase on everything um then you have i don't know if this felt like a 12 minute fight scene with john in the like that little showroom area with the, the the glass panels, mm -hmm. he's I feel shooting like they out have people. that in every movie. <laughs> Some form of glass. Every he has to get thrown through through ten things of glass in each movie. <laughs> it, it's in every continental. You have to have this nice showroom that's regionally no, that's specific. Because it is in the continental. Yeah, and so like the goons, like he's he's shooting them to you know just suppressive fire like in part three where they have to just stand They're, down and he mm -hmm. takes them out yeah because they also have a lot of armor on so a lot of the bullets aren't doing anything they're just knocking them down yeah and, and then uh he breaks i think one of the, the show pieces and he just grabs the nunchaku and this just became a whole different movie came ninja guided just, oh my god <laughs> but the thing is it's the the movement was it wasn't sped up. It wasn't. It was easy to follow, mm -hmm. but it was still something that you know that Keanu Reeves trained in, and that there's a fight choreography to it. So it felt like really realistic and down to earth on it. And it was, I think, I don't know. Like I've seen other movies where they'll use Nunchaku, and mm -hmm. it's they're either like sped up. It's the movement is amplified by a whole bunch of sound of like the sound effect of them supposed to be moving through the air, and actually this this movie has less of that so it's mm -hmm. just more easier to follow like it, it it looked like he was proficient with it but he wasn't like a master at it not like a lot of the other weapons that he's used in the past where it just seems like he's he's really good at multiple different martial arts like and different weapons that. yeah it's like okay i i did train with these but not that much so i'm decent i'm pretty good with these yeah and same thing getting... like uh, in the third movie i think he was using a sword so like he used the sword pretty good uh, for some of those, but I think the other guys were clearly better with the sword. And yeah, that, he's not a master. And then he always switches to like what he's good at. He, he which is all the sambo, aikido, mm -hmm. and judo moves. He is proficient enough in the weapon that, with his grit and experience, he it carries him through all of his fights. Um, I think Anthony and I, I think shouted out, what, what is it we shouted out? Like, oh, my games every time 
when he went for the fake out and mm-hmm. then the, the nunchuck hit. Uh, <laughs> the guy's like, Ugh. I think he like he like faked hitting his face, and the guy like covered his face, and then he just like smacked him in the balls. Like he got scared. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh. that was like a very Jackie Chan moment. That's Jackie Chan yeah. does that in a lot of like, his movies. That's another thing about if we're talking about main general thoughts in the movie is there is physical comedy in a situation where it's not supposed to be funny, but like you could still appreciate the humor in that. Oh, okay. Like it's clever. It's not like it's supposed to be this super funny, ha ha laugh out loud moment. It's more of like, it's, it's a chuckle, but also an appreciation because the character is using their wit to get through the situation. It's also funny in the excessiveness, like the scene right before he gets the nunchucks, he's, fighting two guys and he keeps hitting one toward the drum and then while that guy's knocked out like on the jump he goes to the other guy and he's doing all these moves and then when the guy in the jump comes back to try to hit him and i think he pushes him back and then he either, shoot, the drum. He either shoots him or stabs him and throws him back to the jump like five times <laughs> and so like it was like a good two minutes of fighting these two specific <laughs> guards for no reason and again it was it's, funny and then a lot of people really appreciate these movies because it shows that john wick isn't like, yeah, he's a one-man killing machine, but he's by no means, like, completely invincible, and nor does he get through the fight unscathed. Like, he's he's going to have some cuts, some bruises. Maybe All the time. A lot of bruises. Like, that club <laughs> in Germany. Like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All the memes of people dancing in the background while you're... Uh... While John Wick's taking out gu- guards, you're just... <laughs> Toby Maguire dancing, doing something really stupid. <laughs> That's my favorite. And then we had that new character, Killa. In, in Scott Dirk. Atkins. Yeah. Yeah. That's Scott Atkins. Dude, I was so blown away that they're going to put somebody as tenured in the action movie realm as Scott Atkins in a fat suit. And they're just <laughs> like, yeah, we're going to put you in a fat suit and give you m- more material to chew on. And his whole poker se- scene in his club but you house you have basically like it's set up the ultimate like conflict of the movie really well and he's plays a a foil to what everybody's looking for and it was really unique to see it set up that way and like oh we're gonna no we're we're not just gonna straight up fight everybody right now it's gonna be this card game and the card game tells you about this character killer too and i can't I don't know, like, it's just little things like that. This movie the, is what the, helps the sheer, series shine. There's so much attention to detail, small little ca- bits of character development or character reveal based off of just little actions. Not so much their monologuing, but the little actions they do, too. It's really good. Yeah. I really like the... I, I think they've been doing this since the second movie, but I feel like e- each movie keeps escalating that it just feels more like a video game. And so, like, there's this like really long level or action set piece and then it's like all right now it's like the side quest okay oh you have to do this in order for me to give you this and so it's like he after the osaka sequence then they're like hey well you can do this and uh you can just uh what do you call it um um fight this guy in 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 single combat and uh oh but in order to do that you have to go here and then that's where he ends up in germany i don't know why yeah. but it kind of <laughs> like, it kind of gave me batman arkham vibes mm-hmm. a little bit um like when, when it comes to the combat uh with having john wick jump between a goon uh, like you know back and forth it, it kind of reminds you of if you ever played the batman arkham games mm-hmm. where you're having to do these uh like these combo attacks where you're jumping from one goon punching them or kicking them and then hit them uh, with a gadget, jump over them, hit them yeah. with your cape. <laughs> and then, and then throw, you go to the next goon and you're punching them and you jump back to another one. Times eight, take down. Hit them yeah. with an uppercut. But then hit also hit jab. wide a counter. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And then also with like what Anthony was saying about uh, all these side, uh, side quests, you go somewhere and then uh, you find out you have to go out somewhere mm-hmm. else to do something. <laughs> you go there and you have to do another thing. Yeah, yeah when stuff like, to remember, talk to one guy. Yeah, he's like, remember, you have a family that sits at the table. You just have to kind of go back into the family and now you have to go to germany and and do all this and then the, and then his family's like you're not a, a part of our family I, uh, we'll let you back in if you do this and so it's like the next 40 minutes of the movie <laughs> and that little side quest get, puts him at odds and in the 
sights of both the tracker and Kane. And he has to go through all this stuff while kind of dodging them at the same time. And they have to kind of fight their own way out of this whole, this cool, like, bumping club in Germany. Uh, There's this very brutal architecture. Um, But then part of that whole sequence is because that was, that part is right after Osaka. John talks to Winston and Winston shows Sharon's uh, gravestone. And they t- have their, you know, waxing poetic about what the next step is. And John, have you thought this through? What's going to happen? Yeah. Everything with That's the marquee. Half of his dialogue in this movie. And when, you know, yeah. Ian McShane. Very just, minimalist. Just uh, you must beat him at his own rules. That's a terrible Ian McShane. I Consequences. <laughs> My dear boy, John, you've not learned that the actions have consequences. Yeah. And Sharon had to pay for hours. Like that it was it's just Ian McShane's just awesome. Like anything he's in, you, you gotta watch it. Like he actually made I'll go on record with this. He actually made the uh Rock Hercules movie mm-hmm. more entertaining. <laughs> I, I I've never heard other like production stories of that movie, but I want to see if there were any like Ian McShane, Dwayne Johnson like interactions in the past, but that's for a different day. And so, yeah, like Anthony said, it took us to Germany. That whole, that and this fight sequence is really cool because the this, guy It's that, act two. Like, there's like three long act sections in this in this movie. In a two hour and 49 minute movie. Yeah. Um, we didn't talk about how another way to establish that Kane is really that, truly that guy that can take on John is that he... Um, in single combat, defeats Shimazu in that continental. That's right, and how reluctantly bad... he really didn't want to. No, he's just like, please, just stop. Like, just just go. Just tell me where he's going. And like, and he was fighting him off and beating him because he was already kind of injured anyway, and he knows he has to do it because his whole situation with his daughter. But he, I under... didn't understand that though. Why he Kane was letting him go. He was like. He's like, all right, I know, I know, like, I already beat you. Like, you, you can just stop. And, like, he gave him the out. So why did he just continue? I think Honor demanded it. Because of the friendship that he had with John. It's like, I can't. I have to try my best to make sure he doesn't go after John. That kind of thing. Or at least slow He did anyway, I mean. <laughs> I know, but, you know, Honor dictated it. And then how, again, Stone Cold badass moment where he does the Kill Bill thing. Mm-hmm. He tells Akira, like, oh, I'll be waiting for you. So and He's like, so, just go live your life. He's like, but I know, but, you know you're yeah. going to come back at some point. Uh, so I'll be waiting. And, uh, man, and that fight sequence in that space was so cool. Great acting, too. Like, you could see that, like, Kane's character, like, he did not want to do that. And, like, he was even crying, like, after he, you know, he killed his supposed, like, friend or yeah, colleague friend, in the assassin but, game like yeah but rules but, are rules yeah. you know he's like i have to no, do this yeah, he, he has to do this because he's trying to save his daughter i will do what i must yeah I, yeah exactly <laughs> i will do what i must obi-wan style um yeah i want to talk about scott atkins in a fat suit <laughs> i can't believe they did that i i'm still flabbergasted i don't think these guys have seen anything that scott atkins has been in i don't think Zibaba so Yega. Yeah, and with the hilarious German accent, and um, at first I'm like, oh, he's not gonna do anything. He's gonna just maybe do some big body moves or like, kind of like the Mike Tyson thing from Ip Man Three, where he's just gonna just try to box. And so he did some of that. I was like, okay, yeah, that's what's going on. And then he hits this man with a roundhouse kick. It's like, man, that's a good makeup. <laughs> I, I I was I was confused how he was able to do that, like in his fat suit. It's. It's, he was in Doctor Strange. Okay, I was just about to say Which one? That. The first <laughs> one? I saw a picture. The first one. Where, was he one of uh, the henchmen of, of the bad guy? Of, yeah, of, uh, I forgot his name now. But, yeah. You're talking about the, the character? You want to know the and, character? And he's in right Ip Man 4. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's we know. the bad guy in Ip Man 4. Yeah, we know. He's like an American drill instructor that uh, he just. I think he's a general. And he has he's to, a colonel or something. Something like that. And he has to fight him at the end. Yeah. Basically, it's like Ip Man's son is being bullied, or I don't know. Like it's, yeah, it's number four was weird. Number four is weird, but uh, yeah, homie, uh, whooped that ass for a little bit. Uh, 
but and he even did the, the spinning heel kick too. Right, like he he's he in a lot stuff. of he's in a lot of like B action movies, a lot of those directed DVD or streaming movies. But he's very widely known in the action movie community and also uh, the stunt community. So that was very cool. It's kind of like a mini Expendables of of action movie stars in this movie. I mean, yeah, like Hiroyuki Sonata has been doing his stuff, and I mean he's kind of typecast as some form of samurai he's been in a lot of sword wielding roles so. bullet train anyone bullet train which i think was the same director right david leach well david no. leach helped do the first one no th- this was the health no i know but stahelski the- and leach did the first john week uh let me think but um he was in uh the wolverine the the japanese one he was oh yeah he was the father yeah, St- Stahelski was... He was in The Last Samurai. He was a samurai in that movie. Oh, he was badass in that yeah. movie. Dude, yeah, he's just badass. Like He but was what? He was in that one scene in Endgame when he gets killed by Jeremy Renner. That was not badass, but... And they were fighting with swords. <laughs> fighting with swords. For like was, two seconds. Yeah, because he was, I guess, uh, the Yakuza. Watch, Yakuza watch, boss. A, watch the 2021 Mortal Kombat, and then you see him actually fight right, with like a, a yeah. kunai and chain. And <laughs> just thought he was also on Lost. He was also in Lost. Not a samurai. Not though. samurai, but <laughs> a really good actor in that too. Just he's just good in everything he's in. He's... If you see a movie and Hiroyuki Sonata's in it, go watch it. Like that's that's kind of the rule now. Like that's our established rule. If he's in it, watch it. He's in Mazda commercials now. Watch it. Yeah. Watch the <laughs> Mazda commercial. Buy a Mazda now. It's kind of weird because I'm, I'm watching like YouTube videos about John Wick Four, and then the ads in that video are Mazda commercials with him in it. I'm like, oh, nice. I see what you're doing. I see what you're kind of weird but i see what you're doing no nah, man that's cool um then uh yeah <laughs> he ends up getting the proof of death from killer but not easy didn't do it easy at all like that was a rough fight for john like he's just getting carried by adrenaline at this point because just like in part one he <laughs> fell down from the second floor oh, of God, a club dude. i like the the slow build up of the you know them playing their hand what game were they playing? I know they were playing some form of poker. It was, standard, was it just standard five standard, card. Uh, five card. Yeah. Uh, no, poker. no Texas. Not Texas. What was really funny about that is that sequence. This is uh, you can tell that Johnny, sorry, that Donnie Yen had <laughs> these really like more insight to the character or gave more flavor to the character. Is that like he's kind of a smart ass and he's over a lot of it, and so they're going through all their hands. And then how did he know what cards he had? Yeah, (laughs) because like I don't know. (laughs) That's the best part. Braille cards. He's just here, like, oh, I I know, just I just know the cards. Don't ask uh, that. That part I won't ask a question. Oh, like like like, I I was fine with him saying like, let me guess, he has five of kind at the end. It's like yeah, he could. Judging by how like everybody's reaction was, he's like, "Mm, that's probably the only hand. Yeah, he's like, oh, he must have something really stupid. Like because the tracker had the royal flush i was like damn that's it you win you, you win the all game. lose yeah. but it didn't happen but no i Killa's like, win <laughs> yeah killer killer hits him with the five twos and that's great kane's there blind just sitting there and like let me guess he has five of a kind like just something but, stupid yeah i thought he'd be <laughs> like legit about it and play the joker and be like i can be whatever i want i win like it's like another two but um, and then they I break out into a massive fight and then massive fight. Oh, can we talk about uh, the tracker's dog? Yeah, yeah. Very another German the Shepherd, right? Movie. A German, I think, believe so. German Shepherd, not, not a so. Malinois or a... Well, look. You, you know the dog stuff. I don't know. You're it a looked, dog. It looks more like a like a. Um, it lo- it looked like it looks similar to the dogs in the third movie. I don't know what kind of dogs those were. I don't remember. I, I feel like dogs? I, think, I feel like in the third movie, I think they were also. Either Malinois or German Shepherds, but I think this one was more like a Malinois. But I could be wrong. I you think it was they look, one they look similar of the two just, dogs? You think this guy's at all related to Halle Berry? You know, at first That'd that's what I was thinking. Maybe was. at some point he might have given the dog, but no, I, I don't think so. I know she. Okay, yeah, it is a it is a Malinois. It is a Malinois. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, a Belgian Malinois. Belgian. And did, all his commands though were in English, right? Nuts, yeah. nuts, <laughs> just nuts, <laughs> nuts. Attack the nuts nuts that dog the best command the dog is crazy that's the, that was probably the best command um yeah that dog uh is also invincible 
A dog cannot die. I mean, he's the John Wick of dogs. <laughs> yeah. Cars don't matter. Cars don't matter. Dude, the whole theater. We haven't even got to France. Yet, yeah, but let's, let's like, finish the. Let's finish the Germany scene. sequence. Yeah, where everybody's dancing and nobody cares. And nobody cares that they're getting <laughs> shot. They're just like, whatever. It's not me. Like I'm good. Because like I guess they knew that's the club staff getting got, and they're like, all right, whatever. It's gonna be my corner and dance. And then at the end of it, when he finally kills Killa, which I find that <laughs> <laughs> conversation funny. Uh, everybody then starts to shuffle out. And again, I mean, he he fell after after thirty minutes of floor. him killing like one hundred and fifty people. This man, yeah, <laughs> this all the every time John falls, I'm like, that's it, that's the end of the movie. Like those. Well, they both fell, and then uh, Killa or Keela, I don't know how how it was pronounced. Yes, broke his uh, neck. Just, yeah, just straight up. Just yeah, yeah on his neck. don't that was land, a brutal don't land on your head. Yeah, don't land on your <laughs> neck. That was great though, and uh, the, the tracker has this kind of bounty that the marquee gave him and at the same time he wants a hire yeah, yeah. He, every time he calls him he's like give me more money like especially like he knows the the market demands did they ever sense. say what his deal was though because he's he was he's been tracking him throughout this movie and it seems like he's been tracking him for a while and he's just like waiting for the bounty to go higher on him yep so it's like but why does he want the money just for money or does he need the money for something specific? Did he ever say anything like that? I think it's just he... He just wants a lot of money. He and knows, he knows his this guy's going to be worth a lot. Yeah, that he... Especially that to see... He's kind of uh, priming the market, if mm -hmm. that makes any sense. That he's helping John still get away to then drive up the price. So mm -hmm. then he can be so the one he to cash in. Yeah. That, he's like, I know I can deal. get you any point because I'm not good. But he's like, you're not up to par yet. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you're not... Where it's really worth it, if, like I, I don't know, like for example, after, because at the beginning of the movie, I think he was what like at eighteen, eighteen million or something like that. Yeah, it's like there's a uh, at eighteen because the same, what was the bounty at the end of three? Was it eighteen, right? I don't know. I just remember in this movie. First it, was like 14. At some point in this movie, he was eighteen, and so I, I figured that's the beginning. Yeah, it was, of the movie. It was one of the first, um, one of the first ones, but I think it was or it, it, the last movie ended like around. 14 or 15 million. Yeah. So they're just like, I'm getting desperate. Rank up another 3 million for killing the elder and uh, go nuts. Literally, because this guy said nuts. Uh, so <laughs> he has a cool gun. Yes. What, what type of gun is that? Some like. Was it the revolver? Or no, the... he had like a detachable shotgun. I don't know. It was a weird gun. Sniper. It was like a revolver <laughs> shotgun i don't know it was it was a mixture i don't know i don't know what type of gun that is yeah the weapons the guns and he took it apart pretty easily so it was like yeah, a the, compact the, shotgun yeah. the martial arts and the weapons uh were really unique like kane's uh walking stick turns also basically into uh like a chinese dao sword so when he would do his kills he just do the the double stab on the heart that was really clean mm -hmm. and efficient uh the tracker had all his gear uh, the was it the reversible backpack that was also was like a body uh mm -hmm. body armor mm -hmm. that was dope didn't it explode and he also had, at one point no no he also had weapons on there so yeah. it's like it's like a kevlar pack slash oh i'm holding <laughs> small guns on here yeah he flipped it over then mm -hmm. grabbed guns out and then kept going it was that little things like that like just make it just again just like, character development <laughs> yeah like it's so much mystique to the character. It was good, like two different additions to the movie mm -hmm. that brought in like totally different styles. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. It's not just the oh, yeah. the John Wick rough and tumble. Yeah. This judo aikido to shoot shoot dead. Well, Moto even even Akira had a different fighting style too, and like she showcased her, like since she's short in stature, she was able to like duck under all these huge guys's. She climbed swings. That yeah, she was pretty much like doing like the Black Widow like moving all around like while like hunched and like just fast moving all around people it was really cool yeah uh can we talk really quickly about like how i this movie is like sort of the evolution and culmination of all these really awesome like establishing shots mm -hmm. so everything we talk about the we talked about the museum but when they finally meet up and the do... like five minute walk of <laughs> no, of winston <laughs> Uh, in that one scene that like the scene in the Louvre where he, 
it's literally just a tracking shot of him walking to uh, the marquee and it's like at least like a minute of screen time of him <laughs> walking just through this long hall. <laughs> oh, but like that's awesome. The marquee's office when they overlook the Continental getting blown up, mm-hmm. like the 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 way that the light shone into the office, the the lighting and the establishment of when John meets up with the marquee and they set up the rules for the duel. All of these like environment shots that are outdoors or even framed in that way are so cool. They were they were and it's like it's done aesthetic in an aesthetically pleasing way. It's it keeps this kind of like sophisticated style to what is in essence really like a just just an action movie, but yeah. it elevates it to yeah, just the next level. Cinematography was on point. Yeah. Really, really was. Um like, I'm trying to think of one most, other sequence. Most action movies kind of go away from this like well we're gonna spend all of our time and focus on the action and let's just you know forget about the other stuff and these yeah. movies are like nah we're gonna we're gonna make this look good yeah like, i know that adds to the to the style of everything else i know there was another scene like we t- obviously the desert in the beginning but danny i know there's another scene i think you mentioned that had a really great cinematography in it and really just um it was somewhere else in france and i think it might have been france I'm not sure, but mm-hmm. I, maybe there's a scene that we're missing. Maybe when they're in the sec- uh, sacred cur, um, well, that's at the end. But I, I don't know. Like oh, they had yeah. some sunrise and sunsets. Yeah. Um, like well, throughout there, the movie, though. Well, when they have to uh, go and establish the terms. Um, oh, like by the yep. Eiffel Tower. Mm-hmm. That was really nice. Or the uh, what about again? I also shots and I, I have in a feeling that was real. Like I think that was like. Like they filmed there. I don't think that was a good At screen. that time. I yeah. think so. I think you're right. What this about... was shot during COVID, no? Like it was. Yeah, this movie was has been done for, for a while. At least two mm-hmm. years or so. Remember, it was supposed to come out when the fourth Matrix came out? That's like right. The it was same the month, same day. And then they delayed it. So. It's supposed to be in 2021, move. right? Or is it... Maybe, yeah. yeah. 2021. By the end of the year, 21. And I think they had finished it earlier that year. So. Yep. Um,. And all of that, just setting up the whole duel, gets to the the final uh, gauntlet that John has to run, <laughs> the almost impossible gauntlet that he has to run from different points in in Paris to get to the. Because of the the DJ, the DJ on the radio, you guys you've never seen the Warriors, right? Mm-hmm. It's the old late seventies action movie, but it's it's. Based off of a, a old Greek uh, story, of, I think it was the Anabasis, but it's basically about a, a group of people that have to fight their way through different areas just to get back home. The warriors they do it because this uh, guy was trying to unite all the gangs in New York, but he gets assassinated and it gets pinned on this gang from uh, Coney Island called the Warriors. So it's basically the warriors having to go throughout the whole city fighting off other gangs because they think that that they're the guys who did it and not actually this other gang that they end up fighting at the end. And it's one of those older, like gritty 70s action movies that I also highly recommend. But it's a really cool kind of nod that John Wick does to that movie. At least that's just that's what I think. It's just crazy because he had to fight so many people to get to like the final boss let's say yeah and like, all those tired. guys getting ready like they have everything from their gear their weapons then you get the what i call the ultimate Chekhov's gun the the dragon blast dragon's uh, breath. shotguns dragon's, the dragon's breath, breath with a mm-hmm. shotgun rounds right like dragon's breath shotgun rounds um that uh whew, that, that scene alone is like so like, this is all due to so once he got the tooth from killer this, then he became part of the family again of, of the the Russian family, and then after they did their terms, then it was decided, okay, uh, you need to meet at the soccer court by sun, sunrise, six oh three a.m. Right. So then it was like, okay, uh, and then it's like the gauntlet of of anything and everything to get there b- before sunrise, and so yeah, the TikTok, Mr. The Marquis like, let me just send out everybody to stop him from getting here. Because if he doesn't get there by sunrise, then auto he loses. Forfeit. Yeah, auto forfeit. And then he would and be you killed. Dead. Him and Winston would die. So. Yeah. And and then, we well, before we get to the dragon's breath scene, he, he is going through 
the arc. roundabout. The arc. Well, first is the I forget what street, but these guys try to jump him uh, around As the cafe walking. or anything. Mm-hmm. He's walking through. Um, he steals the car and rams this other guy in the other yeah. car, and then st- takes the challenger. And all this is to a French version of Paint It Black, which is really cool. <laughs> it was really really the cool. DJ speaking in her, I don't know her like <laughs> coded language and pretty much telling everybody on the streets like where he is. Hey, get John Wick, and uh, you'll get a lot of money. Go over here to John Wick. <laughs> Go over here. That's where John's going. The right now. Wicked Man. Yeah, the Wicked Man in Black. And then they get to the Arc de Triomphe, and it becomes the most intense game of Frogger I've ever seen. <laughs> So there was one guy that for sure double died. I no, think he there was one died. guy that quadruple died yeah. <laughs> because he gets hit by a car and while he's flipping, John Wick shoots him shoots three him, times, yeah. like until he lands. And so, like, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then he know. lands dead, like yeah, because he lands awful. He, he like, died. He died he probably died landing. by the car hit, and then he's like, "Oh, there's also three gunshots." So what I love about that fight was, and I, I was telling Zach, like as it was happening, it's just like the evolution of. Where of how creative they were getting, it's like okay, first we're gonna fight, and also he's fighting the the henchman of the marquee mm-hmm. at the same time, so he's dogged and relentless too. But they're fighting in between cars, like John. Like these cars are going kind of maybe fifteen miles an hour, so like it's gonna hurt, but maybe he's not dead. But they and he finally starts realizing like a lot of the judo moves he uses, he uses them while the cars are moving, so he's throwing <laughs> people into moving cars. <laughs> It was like you said, something out of a video game. It was so unique. It was awesome. Like I haven't seen any other movie do that. Yeah, the whole last segment is just like, oh, you I'm have video two hours to get to this location. <laughs> Good luck, and <laughs> the whole city's coming after you. <laughs> it's a, a gauntlet. That's also where the tracker's trying to call the marquee, and the marquee's like, no, I'm, just, I've got it under control. I'm not keeping the the price up. So and he's, he's getting closer. The, and so closer. he's helping John as he's getting closer. Because like I have him. No, nope, no. He's like he's here. Uh, he's gonna be forty million now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll I'll kill him for forty. And he's like, no, there's not much doing that. And then he sees all these people failing, and he's like, fine, forty. And then everyone gets the forty million bill, and it just goes balls to the wall. John throws a motorcycle at one point. That's awesome. <laughs> just launched the bike at this guy. But that whole sequence is before. The um the when he about. when he Where takes the he steals the car and then destroys the doors of both doors of his car yeah. and then drifts donuts around a couple of <laughs> goons who are trying to shoot him. He had unlimited he, ammo. I think he goes around them like four times. Unlimited <laughs> ammo. And he, I he never saw him reload. <laughs> and he's just like unlimited ammo. Like they gave him a gun that had a high capacity, but not that high. That was insane. <laughs> but apparently, uh, Keanu can. He practiced uh, driving, uh, and like shooting. Driving, driving, shooting, reloading. and reload, like unloading or reloading while shooting. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if he did do it. You just couldn't see it, but yeah, it just seemed like he just kept shooting while he was <laughs> circling them, doing doing it. donuts in the middle of the street. Yeah, but, I, I have yeah, to. The scene was hilarious. Like it was awesome, and then it went on for a little too long, and then it just became funny because it's like he's still circling and shooting these people. <laughs> Yeah, and then that's where it then transitions to them moving into that like apartment warehouse. Building or, yeah, that warehouse. Um, the, the like warehouse. Oh, my God, not warehouse, like, but like it seemed like it was yeah, it was some kind of building. Yeah, like I guess some kind of a building. building. I don't know. Where you do get the dragon's breath and overhead <laughs> sequences, video ridiculous. game sequence, dude. Anthony, or the where, highlight, the highlight. Yeah, the, one of the highlights in the movie is you see the dragon's breath. Uh, ammo really pay off because these guys are trying to shoot him and he's using his kevlar suit to try to block bullets can't block fire no <laughs> it's not ghost but i think i think one of the guys shot him and missed and he saw like oh like he saw the blast and, and he killed like, that guy oh. and took the gun he's like it's mine now. it's my town <laughs> and that overhead shot was pretty much just one long scene yeah, it they, was, they I did think it a, twice. I think it was a simulated. Parts, it was. Yeah. It, it wasn't a complete one uh one cut, but it was close. Like they, I think they yeah. had one, one stitch to make it look like it was like. I, one it's usually, cut. I think it's the part where he's reloading and like no one else is on on stage. I don't. Know, I couldn't in, tell. I tried. I tried looking for it the second <laughs> time I saw it. I still couldn't tell. That scene is is just too good. So <laughs> initially, I was thinking this is straight out of Hotline Miami, which mm-hmm. a lot of people thought, but it's actually uh credited that Chad Stahelski had inspiration from a game called Hong Kong Massacre. The and sales on that game are going nuts. That same that game <laughs> on Steam is gonna go nuts. Uh but 
Yeah, like because of those big blasts of the fire, it really simulated that style of gameplay. And it's also high tension because in those games, is you you mess up once, you're dead. So yeah. it, it adds to that tension. You have this god eye going through the entire, following and through the whole action sequence. You also have Mr. Nobody, the tracker, like going through also in his own way. Mm -hmm. Clearing killing out people some people. Too. Yeah, that was awesome. And then you get the great, like, like the really cool character moment where both of them start fighting each other. But John sees the dog in danger because Chidi, the um, the henchman, he's like about to like murder this dog and he's just like, not today. So he goes after him and Mr. Nobody's like, oh, he saved my dog. Yeah, like, like John Wick could have shot the tracker and stays like, no, I'm going to save the dog. And he that showed the kind of person the uh, that John is and the tracker's like, you know it, that's worth more than 40 million. That was dope. Um, another funny moment in that that top down scene. Um, there's one guy that he shoots with the dragon's breath, and the guy is running on fire and like runs around to another door to oh, the yeah. same room, and he shoots the guy again. again. He shoots him twice. <laughs> it's like wow, double he double died. <laughs> it was, a lot of double awesome. dying in this one. It was amazing. Oh yeah, there's so many great points where like you hear the theater just laugh either. The laugh whole sequence or, was, oh, was ooh, whoa, oh, oh my god, like yeah, it. It's amazing. And then we get to the ultimate climb. That's that like the call. Dude, that's stair the staircase sequence. Well, he jumps off like the third floor of that building. And lands, lands, lands on, on a, a van. van and then hits the floor before he goes to the, the stairs. The van broke the fall. Again, this guy's <laughs> running on pure adrenaline. Yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't care. Cars don't mean anything to yeah, him. He so. doesn't care. <laughs> And so we get to the, the motorcycle launching and then the whole stair sequence where this guy, Chidi, he fell down like three sets of stairs, but he's still alive and is able to meet him after him going through all all these goons up the stairs, which like three of them had the same like, you know, like newspaper. No, he, never, he never fell down. The, like John met with him after like they were waiting for him on that. Yeah. Like, third, but before third him, when he saved stairs. the dog, he... Uh, uh, he saved the dog by attacking oh, yeah, the guy. He got, he he got shot and like flipped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fell down. But he didn't land on his head though. So, so that's why he's, he's okay. good. But yeah, he's good. And so you, you can hear the whole theater groan and like freak out because you know it's it's a time thing. And he gets to the top of these really long three hundred and something steps and just gets knocked his ass down. And he kept going and <laughs> going. No, no stop. He and could have was, stopped. And <laughs> it was clear could've. that the it was like the stunt guy. Once you get to the flat section, you have to push yourself one more Just time. Keep going. So you keep going. <laughs> but it was awesome. And, and then that's where we get Kane that shows up because he's, he's supposed to be there for the fight. He's the advocate for the marquee. Which was a he, cool touch. Like he helped them like get up. Yeah, because he's like, I have to, to kill to you, dude. Like I can't. Like I have to, I have to come up with there with you. So let's go. And then the uh, team up. The team up of, the, of Mr. Nobody, Kane, and John just finally taking everybody out. Uh, Chidi gets his comeuppance because he attacked the dog. He threw the dog into the car in the Arc de Triomphe fight. And the car and the dog was like, "No, no." Then he got up and then Going started growling him. at him. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't do anything. He did, son. Uh, and th like that was such great payoff to then finally get to the Sacre Coeur, and we get to the duel again. Shot really well on Sunrise. Uh, they start at thirty paces. Like I don't want to shortchange. The dramatic effect of what's going on here like you know you get the marquee uh actually you get winston speaking to john he's like hey just just have fun out there <laughs> and then you get the marquis de grammont going to uh going to kane he's like remember you're doing this for your daughter immediately shuts him up just says fuck off like <laughs> stop that that was so good his reaction is so natural it's like dude shut the hell up Get out of my face. I can't even see you, but get out of my face. And then they had three shots to get it, it done. They had to come closer every, 10 pieces every time. Every time. They missed. They didn't die by the shoulder. I, I was surprised. <laughs> this, isn't a, this isn't the Batman. Or did he? Mm -hmm. I so, don't know. Well, it wasn't it, just because of the shoulder. I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was that one. I mean, but yeah, we, we get to that awesome finale where... You know, uh, the final shot goes off. Kane shoots John. John falls, but he's not dead. And uh, the Marquis de Grammont, Bill, Gar Bill Skarsgård, chewing all the scenery here. He's like, I want the, uh, 
was it the, the coup, coup de, de gras? gras? I want the coup de gras. And uh, Zach, what does Winston, what, he gets the gun right up to him. What does Winston remind him? Winston <laughs> reminds the marquee like, as right. He's about to shoot. And he's like, you he didn't. arrogant oh, bastard. Yeah, you arrogant. Yeah, uh, he didn't shoot. Yeah, he didn't shoot. John's like, mm. that was the most satisfying mm-hmm. headshot in the movie. Everyone in the theater was like, yes. everyone in the theater I, went nuts. For at that. first, I thought John missed. Because I, I, I caught it. I only saw the two sh- the the two shots, the two wounds that uh, mm-hmm. Kane had. I'm yeah, like, okay, just, either he missed or shot. something else is going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was all mind games, as Anthony likes to say. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, and then John just had like in between the eyes. And then the Harbinger is like, all right, it's done. He did it. You know, the our business here is concluded. And, Never speak to me again. And, and Kane made sure he's like, so I'm free. Me right? and my and my daughter off the hook, right? He's like, yep. You guys are done. Now let me do this final shot to John Wick, and it didn't happen. Yeah, and that's when John's like, "Awesome, it's time. That's all I wanted." He found a way for both of them to win. But uh, then we had some before the fight. We had a great moment between the Bowery King, Winston, and mm-hmm. and John. He's talking about, "Hey, if you end up going, what do you want on your tombstone?" And your man just says, "Loving husband." And that's, and that's what he got. Yeah, he's like, I just want to go home. And you can tell Winston sees him. He's like, man, he's not, I don't think he's, he's not looking too hot. And they finally get to the, the graveyard and you see John Wick, loving husband, next to his wife, loving wife. I was like, damn. And they showed some clips between John and his wife. and That was uh, dope. And he was on memories. the staircase with the sunlight, like, yeah. kind of like shining on him, thematically showing that, hey, you did it, guy. It's, it's finally done. And Good they, ending. They showed the dog from the previous movies. Yeah. yeah, the the dog from two and three showed mm-hmm. up at the funeral. That was really nice, and um, you know that was that's the movie ends in a nice kind of like catharsis moment yeah. of like, hey, John, you finally did it. Yeah, La- Lawrence Fishburne had some fun scenes in the few scenes he was in. Was oh cool. yeah, homie was able to do all that. It was pretty great. Um, but that's the overview of the movie. I know, like all the action sequences were just top notch. Um. You know, we got a cool post credits where Kane is seeing his daughter perform again in, in Paris, but you see Akira showing up, ro- kind of <laughs> rolling up. She's uh, stalking Kane, right about to show up with the knife, <laughs> and the freaking scene cuts. I'm so mad at that. They, they he pulled gonna, a Chris he Nolan. Get cut. They pulled a Chris Nolan. It's a good uh, tease for what's to come. Hopefully, we're getting a lot of spinoffs. We're getting Ballerina next year. The Continental might be premiering at the end of this year on Peacock. There's a lot of fun stuff. It is this year. We just don't know what date. uh, Fall, like September ish. Yeah, they say September. I'm just in case. I'm I'm guessing October, but and apparently the Ballerina takes place between John Wick three and four. Nice. That's dope. Because I wasn't sure. Because all I knew was that it was a spinoff with Anna Darmus, and that supposedly. John Wick was gonna be like maybe like cameo in, in the movie, America. but uh, I was like, so I was a little confused. And yeah, they, they confirmed that it takes place between those two movies. Nice. So, with that, gentlemen, it's rating time. Uh, I uh, just this movie or all of them? Just eh, this one, just this one, mm-hmm. yeah, because yeah, there's opinions about how these movies go in rank, but let's stick to John Wick chapter four, yeah. So, uh, you know, ten out of ten dragon's breath shots. Uh, or out of how many dragon's breath shots? What do you guys think? Uh, nine. I'm gonna say a ten. I'm gonna say nine. So, Danny, you think it's the perfect action movie for a John Wick movie? It's a ten out of ten. Okay, Anthony. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd probably give it. Mm, yeah, nine point five. Like it's. By far the best action out of all of them. Like the action is just ridiculous, and I thought it would be tiring because like you have such long action scenes and you'd get tired of it. And I was like, nope, you can give me a five-hour movie like this, and I would <laughs> not care. Apparently, the original cut of this movie was three hours and forty-five minutes. I want that extra hour. <laughs> They're like, you got to cut that down. No, uh-uh. I'm um, mad. Yeah. All right. Well, I think they they intended this to be two movies. Like they wanted to uh, film four and five back to back, and it just didn't end up working out. So they just made a long fourth one. And good, but yeah, it was worth it. Yeah, it was, absolutely worth it. 
Uh, what about you? But yeah, my nine, turn. Nine point five. Nine point five for sure. Yeah, because I mean, I like all four, but this one I think. Is yeah. Too good. I'm on the camp that every movie got better. Mm-hmm. Uh, like every, like the catacombs scene in part two, for example, like where he's reloading the shotgun, he has all the weapons planned out, like that, like leveled up the gunplay, the the fighting. Anyway, point is, I would say, if like, if like part one's like a you know, eight point five, part two, eight point five, part three, nine. I would say part four is a nine point five. Yeah, that's I'm hard nine close, and a half. Very close to that. <laughs> I would give it a perfect ten. It's just there were some in, con, very small. Uh, what are they called? It's uh, like the continuity the, errors. Yeah, very the small story continuity is, errors. the story in this one is a little whatever, but it's just the action is just so well done, and everything else is done well done. The the cinematography, the the music, the music's insane. They brought back a lot of songs from the first movie. Like I think the music from the club in this movie was the same from the first movie. The first one. So it was kind of like John Wick's. Greatest hits from like, the yeah. previous three movies. This is the this magnum one. opus yeah, of this series. Uh, really it's cool. the only series where every movie just got better, and better, and better. So nine, hard nine and a half. Movie's amazing. Everybody's got to watch it. Yeah, definitely watch it. Absolutely. It's, Our, it's probably one of the best action movies to come out in a long time. It's like in my. It's now I think in my top five of all it's, all time action. It's movies. very similar to the Raid Two, where it's like the Raid Two just amped up the raid one and it, and it was also much longer so i feel like these guys like the raid two so much like let's make the american version I, of the raid two i was joking with somebody that like my top three action movies right now are uh the predator or just predator you know like the arnold predator uh the raid two and now john wick four like this just pretty good list that's it's got everything everything i want in an action movie it's too good uh, with that, gentlemen, uh, any final thoughts, Zach, Danny? Go watch it. Yeah, the biggest screen. Watch it twice. <laughs> watch More it times. three times. Yeah, watch it multiple times. I'm gonna watch it again tomorrow. Yeah, the, the length. Don't worry about the length. It does not matter. Like you, you won't even realize it because, yeah, there are long fight sequences, but you don't even realize like, oh, I just watched 45 minutes of the movie, and, and that was just the first action sequence. Too damn good. Go watch it. All right. Support Keanu. Support. And and all the stunt people that Thank made you. this movie ridiculous. <laughs> this Without guy, these stunt people, this movie wouldn't be what it is. This man stole what I was going to say. Support all the stunt people. Support the great crew that went into... that. All the hard work that the crew did to make this magnum opus of action. Like All they needed was Tom Cruise. Like They had everybody else in except Tom Cruise doing his stunts. Was there a long run? Somebody had in a long movie? run, right? They had no. a long, long walk. Yeah, he was uh, hobbling the whole movie because he's injured the whole movie. I don't think he ran. Everything. I could have sworn somebody had like a long run. But uh might have been the track. No. Anyway, it was it's amazing. Everybody got a chance to shine. Movie looks incredible, shot incredibly. Every action sequence, every set piece has something that's gonna blow your mind and will continue to blow your mind from all the details. Movie's incredible. You have to watch it. It's a must watch. With that, everybody, thank you for tuning in to this special spoiler cast of John Wick Chapter 4. Like the gentleman here next to me said, go watch the movie. If you're listening and seeing spoilers, it doesn't matter at this point. Just watch it for just how well it was made. And we will continue to be talking about this. This movie's too good. But uh, we'll be back next time with our uh, kind of watch list recommendation of i believe it was baby driver yes it was so we'll talk about some other great action and car choreo- choreograph and music there too so stay tuned to that episode everybody with that thank you so much again for tuning in and stay pop until next time keep that popcorn fresh later guys